If you take a look at this channel, you'll notice I run a lot of cylinder hit tests. Well, today we're gonna go full geek mode on cylinder hits. I'm gonna show you three formulas. The first one tells you how much power a cylinder head can make. The next one shows you how much of that potential you're making on your combination. The last one allows you to compare cylinder heads and figure out which one might make more power on your combination. Interested? Let's get going. So to get this discussion going on cylinder heads, I thought I would sit out here. It's a beautiful day. It's nice out, you know, <laughs> birds are chirping, the sun's out. Rather than sit in my office behind the computer screen, you know, that's kind of boring. So the first of our formulas basically deals with the maximum power potential of the cylinder head. Now I've gone over this in a couple of other videos, but basically you're looking at the maximum flow rate of the cylinder head in CFM at whatever valve lift that is and then you multiply it by two. So if we've got a cylinder head that flows 400 CFM, you've got the potential to make 800 horsepower. That's a simple formula, it's easy to use, it works fairly well, and you know, it's something you could apply to basically any cylinder head. Now here's why <laughs> that formula isn't absolute. First of all, we've made more than that number. Generally it's less. But we have made more than that. If you put a cylinder head that doesn't flow very well, for instance, we did a test with a stock 5 liter Ford cylinder head and put it on a 392 inch stroker with lots of camshaft and stuff in it and ran that head and you're, we we're able to make, you know, 2.1, 2.2, even 2.3 horsepower per CFM. Because that's what it is. On a 400 horsepower cylinder head, if you're making, I mean, on a 400 CFM head, you're making 800 horsepower, that's two horsepower per CFM. So now I said, we've made 2.1, 2.2, even as much as 2.3, and there are guys that are probably making more than that. So getting the most out of that head, getting two horsepower per CFM, is more difficult to do, and you have to have the combination. Just because you have the airflow from the cylinder head doesn't mean you're going to make that power. Let's put this into perspective. If we take a stock LS3 cylinder head that flows 315 CFM, and you're running it on a stock LS3, <laughs> it's not going to make 630 horsepower because the rest of the combination won't do that. This just talks about the potential of the head. The head can make that much. It can make, and, and the two horsepower per CFM is a good round number. It's easy math, it's easy to multiply. So it, but it's determined by both the potential of the head and the combination that you're putting up. But it's a good way to like reference the head. It's a good way to determine, okay, how much can that head make? Now, here's something that's important. Not only is the combination important, because you're not gonna get there unless you have the right combination, but you also need to look at the camshaft. So if you have a 400 CFM head that flows 400 CFM at 800 lift, and you have a 600 lift cam, <laughs> that doesn't make any difference. You need to look at the airflow at 600 lift and whatever that is, you need to multiply that by two and not the big flow number that you're never going to use because you don't have enough camshaft. So it's important that you apply the, this formula correctly and know that it's just basically the potential of the head. You have to have the combination, you have to have the head, you have to have the right cam lift, all of that stuff has to work. Now let's take a look at how much of that head you're actually using. Now this formula where we get two horsepower per CFM can also be used in reverse and it tells you how much of that cylinder head you're actually using and whether or not you would ultimately need to upgrade the cylinder head that you have for something that flows more. I'll give you an example. Let's say that you have an LS motor and you have a cylinder head on there that flows 300 CFM. It doesn't matter what it is, whether it's a rec port or cathedral port, whatever. We're, we have an imaginary LS motor and we have a cylinder head that flows 300 CFM. Let's say your combination is making 500 horsepower. So we know that the cylinder head, because it flows 300 CFM, will support 600 horsepower. We know that it probably would do more than that, but let's use the two horsepower per CFM rule as a general guide. So we have a 600, CF, or a 600 horsepower cylinder head, and we're only making 500 horsepower. So really we're only using five sixths of what that head has to offer. Now we're not at the two horsepower per CFM uh, level yet, so we also know something else. We're not using everything that that head has to offer. So we also know that there's more cylinder head left and that doing a cylinder head upgrade on that combination is not gonna help us. 
Now we might pick up a little bit of power by going to a better cylinder head, but the reality is we just need more in our combination to take advantage of the airflow that that cylinder head has to offer. And that's a very common occurrence. If you take a look at the, at the video on the LS3 heads, that's very common for guys to do. They have a stock cylinder head that flows 315 CFM. And a lot of LS3 combinations, especially things that are only 6.2 liters, like a, a factory LS3 or an LY6, like a six liter even more so, they're not taking advantage of everything that that cylinder head has to offer because they're not making more than 600 horsepower NA. And they've already got a cylinder head that will flow enough to support that power level. So upgrading to a CNC ported head that flows, you know, 340, 350, 360 CFM is of limited benefit. And we kind of showed that in that big video in that cylinder head test where we had a 468 inch test motor and you know we weren't gaining a ton of power by putting really good cylinder heads on it. Now in truth, we probably needed a camshaft that had a lot more lift and we'll talk about that later on because if you have a big set of cylinder heads, meaning big port volume and big uh, valve size, and we'll get into this on our discussion on uh, coefficient of discharge, but if you have a big head with big valve and big flow, you need a big camshaft to take advantage of that stuff. Now, so that's, again, that's combination specific. But if we're not using all of the head that's there, there's extra cylinder head left, and this formula takes, it, takes that into account. If we're not at the two horsepower per CFM level, there's more cylinder head there. We just need more combination, we don't need more cylinder head. Our final formula is something called coefficient of discharge. And it's something that was taught to me by Brian Tooley of Brian Tooley Racing, who knows more about cylinder heads and cylinder head flow than I ever will. So I thank him for <laughs> bringing me up to speed on this important like comparison data, because it's really cool. It allows you to actually compare different cylinder heads and not just flow rates like we normally compare, because most people decide what they're gonna do, what cylinder head they're gonna pick based on airflow. And even if they dive into it a little bit deeper and look at the flow rates through the whole lift range, because it's very important when you look at a cylinder head, you need to look at not just the peak flow, because you might not even be using that if you don't have enough camshaft, but even if you look at the number at like, let's say 600 lift, which is a definitely a usable number, if you don't look at the rest of the airflow through the whole lift range, you don't get an idea of what that head's going to do. It may have really good peak numbers. It may have really bad mid lift and low lift numbers, which means it's not gonna do very well. You wanna have the most airflow through the whole lift range. And in my opinion, the mid lift flow is much more important than the peak flow because when you watch the valve open and close, it spends twice as much time in the mid lift as it does at the peak flow rate. So those are kind of more important. But the coefficient of discharge formula adds a whole nother level to that. And it tells you how, not just how much flow there is, but how efficient that head is at providing that flow and how much potential power it can make. So the coefficient of discharge basically is a measurement of the airflow relative to the valve size. Now, in my opinion, the port volume also takes um, precedence here and kind of tells you what the thing is going to do like at different RPM ranges and stuff. But the coefficient of discharge is kind of cool because what you need to do is take the airflow at any lift range. And now when we look at the airflow of the cylinder head data that we did on the big, on the big cylinder head test, what you want to do is take the airflow at every lift range, 50 thousandths, 100 thousandths, 200, 300, all the way through the lift range, and then divide that by the valve size. And then we start to see why a cathedral port head, for instance, on an LS application, why it might do very well compared to a rec port head that is bigger in port volume and more importantly for the coefficient of discharge has a much bigger valve. So yes, it flows more. Like when I did the test on the LY6, we compared the stock LS3 head to a trick flow 225 head, which have comparable airflow numbers. But the cathedral port head does it with two things that benefit it and allow it to make a lot more power. It does it with a smaller intake valve and it also does it with smaller uh, cross section on the port. So I've always um, promoted the fact that when I've done all this head testing, even back when I did with a five liter Fords and anything that I've ever tested, as a general rule, I like to say that 
the head that's going to make the most power is the one that flows the most through the smallest opening. And that's kind of what this coefficient discharge tells you. So if you take the airflow and divide it by the valve size, it gives you a coefficient of discharge number. And that number, <laughs> the biggest number, wins basically. So do that through the whole lift range and allows you to compare cylinder heads. So do it with a cathedral port head and a rec port head and you'll see some interesting stuff. What you'll see is the the coefficient of discharge for a rec port head only gets good at the top lift ranges because sure it has lots of airflow but it also has a really big valve which tends to not have a good coefficient of discharge number because the the thing that you're dividing it by is too big. Basically the valve is too big for the amount of airflow. So you need lots of airflow, but you also want it to airflow, you want that airflow number to be high, but with a small valve. So as I've always said, <laughs> the head that flows the most through the smallest port and through the smallest valve is usually the one that makes the most power. And that's what this coefficient discharge tells us. So what you want to do, take any head, small block Ford, big block Ford, small block Chevy, big block Chevy, two valve, four valve, it doesn't matter any different, doesn't make any difference what it is. Take the flow rate, divide it by the valve size, and you have coefficient of discharge. Now, take all of those numbers through the whole lift range and then compare them to, you can use that to compare the heads. The one that has the best numbers, the best combination of numbers or average numbers through all of those lift ranges, the best coefficient of discharge numbers is usually the head that makes the most power. Now, obviously there are situations, and, we, and the, the, the other way that I like to look at these kinds of things is I like to look at the extremes. So if we take, for instance, if we want to make the maximum amount of power, more power than anything else, more peak power than anything else. Obviously, big port, big valve, lots of RPM, lots of displacement. Now obviously you're gonna combine that with lots of camshaft, lots of lift, lots of duration, a short runner intake, so that's the maximum power, that's on that end of the scale. If you wanna have <laughs> not very much power, lots of low speed power, driving around, you're gonna want the opposite of that. You're gonna want a mild cam, small port, small valve, all that stuff. Now everything else basically fits somewhere in the middle. And that's where coefficient of discharge will come in. You can, de you can decide for your combination what the best head would be by looking at this coefficient of discharge. So it's another thing. You can look at peak flow. You can look at flow through the whole lift range. Now you can add coefficient of discharge to that. Then there's lots of other stuff. You can look at chamber volume and chamber shape and, and valve job and you can really get into it. But the coefficient of discharge just adds another level that allows you guys to take all of the data that I provided in all these cylinder head tests, whether it's an LS, a rec port, a cathedral port, big block Chevy, whatever it is, and figure out how efficient that head is on that combination. I'm Richard Holder, guys. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. Lots of stuff coming up. I'll keep testing.